What's up you guys, it's Peter here and I want to continue with our SDF examples. Now, if you haven't seen the previous two videos, uh, please check them out. One covers more the theory, the other one covers the first example. Um, and now I want to dive into another example for SDF, sign distance fields. So let's have a look. So in the previous example, just to sort of showcase, right, we used the SDF of the pig's head to sort of mask out, right, based off of some kind of growth of an SDF. So that was, you know, useful and sort of, you know, adaptive resolution and all that kind of stuff. And if you want to know how to do that, please check out the previous video. Now I want to get into the next part, which is basically, we're again going to start with our pig's head. But what I want to do with it is I want to start um, covering it with particles. So on the one hand here, I'm going to use this uh, pig's head and subdivide it heavily. So it's got a lot more detail to it because we're going to want to stream some particles over the surface and have them crawl over the surface. So the beauty of this is, right, as soon as I do VDB from polygons, right, it will cleanly inherit and, uh, you know, all of that detail and it will turn it into a nice and detailed SDF. So here we've got 0 0.2 and we've got some exterior voxels and we filled in the interior. So why would I do the subdivide, right? Well, if I didn't do the subdivide, then the faceting will actually get captured inside of my SDF, right? So you can kind of sort of see over here, you know, all of these little flat areas, and I don't want that. So instead, we're going to subdivide this so it's nice and smooth and nice and clean. Okay, great. The next thing that I want to do is on this sort of smoothed surface, I'm going to scatter a whole bunch of points. So we're going to scatter a lot of points, and then I'm going to visualize them using a bounding box in my color over here. Okay, great. So this is going to go into a DOP network, into particles. So the first thing I want to do is emit a bunch of particles from here. And then we're also going to feed that this SDF. And so what I want to do is first of all, all right, let's just bypass my subsol for just a moment. I've got my particles coming in, right, pretty default, right, they're going to come in as all, all points, use the first context, and I'm birthing them just on the first frame. So it's literally on the first frame, boom, uh, birth all of these particles and then stop emitting. I also have a pop wind over here that has a little bit of amplitude, but the rest of it is default. So there's literally just some curl noise on the inside of it uh, that is going to make my points move. So if we press this, we kind of sort of see it, right? Great. My points are indeed moving. Yeah, nice. Um, so how do I want to use right this SDF now, right? Because I basically want to have my particles stick to the surface. Well, this is where my VDB from polygons is going to come in and where I'm going to fill in the interior. And then I'm going to snap my particles to the surface. I'm going to snap. So what does it mean to snap them to the surface when we're talking about SDFs? Remember, signed distance field. So that means a field that captures the distance to the surface and it's signed. That it means it's negative on the inside, positive on the outside. So the distance to the surface when we're on the surface is going to be zero. So I want to make sure that my particles are able to snap to the surface. Now there's two ways of doing it. And notice I'm referencing my polygons I'm referen and I'm referencing the SDF. Also, the scatter operation over here has an output of the P scale of the particle. That's gonna come in later into play when we're actually doing the visualization of it. But for now, let's dive inside of the subsolver and enable that. So I've got, the, I've named this subsolver, subsolver snap, so it can do snapping. And I've got two switches over here. Let's do, let's set this to uh, zero first and let's see. So on the one hand, I've got over here all my points that are coming in. I have also the polygonal representation of my pig's head that is coming in, right? And I'm gonna do a simple naive array operation that is doing a minimum distance, which is basically going to snap all of my points to the surface. So if we look at this, right, the points are away from the surface, and then here they're going to be snapping to the surface. Now, although this works, right, this is expensive to do. This ray operation over here, this minimum distance, every single time, it'll basically need to recompute the distance for every point. Now, at the moment, I've got, I don't know, let's see how many points I've got, 10,000 points. Um, but if this is starting to go into the millions of points, this is going to start to get really expensive, especially if we need to do this in sub-step lookups and stuff like that. It's going to become, uh, you know, a computationally expensive operation. All right, so I'm back in my uh, subsoil, in my popnet. Let's step outside of this for a moment and let's just visualize this as these particles crawl over that surface. All right, great. System's working. Basically, the particles are moving around, right? Hope this is vivid. Let's just uh, change the visualization of the points for just a moment here. Let's make them a little bit bigger, right? So you can see it in the viewport, right? Um, great. So my, my points are basically crawling around on the surface, right? Nice. 
Um, now we can do this again, right, using our displacement, uh, using our gradient vector as well as our SDF. So let's dive inside and do that now again, the same operation, but this time using an attribute fob, and I'm going to snap my points to where the SDF is zero, right? So that basically displaces it along the gradient um, based off of the SDF value. So the first thing that I want is that gradient again, normalize it, negate it, right? And then we're going to simply use over here this volume sample. They're both you know, grabbing that SDF. This one is going to sample the, uh, the signed distance, right? So it's going to grab the signed distance, whereas the other one is going to grab the gradient. By the way, if you're a little confused, please watch the other videos because it's nicely explained in there. Now, all right, with the gradient normalized and negated, we can now basically move that point back onto the surface. So the gradient over here is going to move it onto the surface in the direction, right, of the gradient, of the negated gradient, by how much, right? So the amplitude over here is going to be based off of that um, SDF value. And that is going to add over here to the existing position. And that is literally displacing the point. If it was outside, it is going to displace it and move it back onto the surface. Great. So this is quite fast, right? So if we again, so if let's, uh, let's see if we can step forward, I'm going to bypass this just a moment. Let's, uh, you know, play this a little bit just so that these uh, points are coming off of the surface. Notice that I'm, you know, outside of my sub solver. So as soon as we do that, here's my geometry. Uh, let's see if we can just play this back a little bit. I just want them to come off a little bit. All right, here's my geometry. I'm inside of the sub solver, right? And so here, this is my SDF that is coming in. And so some of these points that are outside need to be snapped to the inside. And so as soon as we do that, right over here, we can see the difference outside of the geo. And then they're basically being snapped all on top of the geo. Great, I'm going to change my switch now to one so that instead of using the ray operation with the minimum distance of the snapping, I'm going to use my attribute fob that is going to use the second input over here, which is the SDF. And let's display that. So this is going to be nice and quick, nice and fast. Uh, let's go outside of my .NET and just rewind the entire .NET so everything cleanly reevaluates. So again, same deal. It's literally just um, running over the surface, right? So all my points are running over the surface. And now you can play with the visualization of this. You can kind of trail a bunch of lines behind this. You can spawn new points. You can uh, do a relax operation on them and basically push them apart if they get too, you know, uh, clumped up together. Um, yeah, different things we can do with this. I basically attached a trail operation of 240 on this. So that basically gives me all of these sort of, you know, points, right? That basically here, oh, they're all sort of moving and creating a lot of particles right now. Now, again, we can turn this into individual lines by using uh, by group and using the particle ID. So an add operation with polygons by group, uh, by attribute, and then create the ID attribute, or rather use the ID attribute that was created from the particles, right? So here on the particles, otherwise you could have done uh, the, the point number, it doesn't change, so you could use point number two, but um, it will create an ID attribute for us over here. So every point will have a unique ID, so that as we leave a whole bunch of points behind, right, we could isolate one of these ID values, so something along these lines, um, attribute ID equals, I don't know, we've got a bunch of them, so I don't know, 500, right? So delete non-selected, isolate one of these. And so here's a little sort of bunch of points that has basically been growing and left behind as we are crawling over that surface. So that's basically what the add operation is going to do as we say, okay, do this by ID. Now it's getting heavy, right? So it's gonna we're up to uh, 2 million points, looks like it, yeah, 2 million points. So what do we do with all of this data, right? Well, we can visualize it, right? So this is kind of nice, kind of fun to sort of play with. We can give it uh, a poly wire, right? So we can give it some, uh, now this is pretty, pretty heavy, so let's maybe make it a little shorter, so something like this, so we can kind of sort of still see it. Um, if we poly wire this, it's going to turn this into a whole bunch of polygons, right? So we, um, you know, it takes a while, it's going to have some width now, and let's hide this all right so now we're kind of just visualizing this as you know poly wires so it's kind of cool other ways to sort of visualize it is we can give it a density attribute and rasterize all, all of our particles so now i'm looking at this as if this was a fog volume right so rasterizing this it's a little hard to see it's very faint um, and then we can convert this fog volume into polygons. Now, depending on the resolution of your uh, fog volume, right, it's gonna it's gonna be too dense or not. So if we look at this, right, we can kind of see, 
you know, here's the individual particles, right? So step, step, step. So that's not that great from that close up. But you know, if you're further away, maybe it looks cool, maybe it works. The alternative way of doing this, so the rasterize is a really, really fast way to, uh, you know, turn points into volumes, right? So I like using that, but the, uh, but you don't have that much control over it on how it does it. Um, the other way is using VDB from particles that works as well. And that is going to give me over here pretty dense particle volume. So this is now an SDF, right? So we have, the, this is a surface. So it's uh, basically every particle, every point will create a, a little bit of a distance uh, equation that gets evaluated and uh, will be stored as an SDF. So once we have an SDF, we can smoothen our SDF which also takes a little bit of time. There we go. So now it's smooth it, right? So unsmooth it versus smooth it. So smooth it a little bit. And then finally, we can convert that to polygons as well. So here out comes the polygonal geometry. And so those are different ways to visualize the, um, you know, the result of, uh, you know, all these points crawling over the surface. Now, where this really comes from, right? Where this is really useful, because let's go back up to the points, right? Imagine that these are like little bugs, little creatures, right? You can basically build a fuzzy logic system. And in a later video, I will build one together with you guys um, so that we can basically have this crawl over the surface. So it could be little bugs, little ants, little beetles, little spiders, whatever, right? Something or our agents could be, um, you know, the actual agents as well, Houdini's agent systems. Right, uh, so humanoids uh, or bipeds, quadrupeds that are walking over the surface. So that's quite, uh, you know, useful. But that means you're doing that distance calculation a lot. And so, in order to avoid that distance calculation, we're doing a lookup, a volume sample. The distance calculation has already happened as part of the VDB from polygons. Now, a good idea is that if this geometry were to be animating, right, then we might want to bake out our uh, set of VDBs, our set of SDF fields, right? Uh, we want to bake them out and compute them out beforehand before we basically uh, start doing all the other computation. Um, yeah, so that's basically why VDBs and, and SDFs are super useful. They're part of Houdini's data acceleration structure that you don't necessarily have in other applications. And... Um, yeah, it's basically helping to speed up computation and helping to create cool visual effects. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, uh, please consider liking and subscribing. It will help the YouTube algorithm help me out. And um, I look forward to another video. Cheers. Bye.